have all of the experiences you can have so you can learn from them and as you get older and for me as I look back on them I go you know what they were crazy times but I learned so much Welcome to season 3 of the Amani Experience podcast In this podcast you will experience wisdom advice and stories from creatives all over the world your host is the award-winning Amani Roberts, who is a DJ, music producer, professor, author, and undercover gamer. On the show, we love to share the stories of creative professionals, especially people who have gone from the corporate life to the creative life. Once again, welcome to the Amani Experience Podcast. Welcome to episode 117 of the Amani Experience Podcast. For this show, we have Tessa Young, also known as DJ Tessa, with us. Three of my favorite things about this episode is Tessa was very open about lessons she learned in her 20s. She learned a lot and she shares about it, so I appreciate that. Second, she discusses the benefits of a good hobby so you don't get burned out. I think that's valuable for all of us creatives to have a good hobby that kind of keeps us centered. And then third, Tessa is just a dope DJ, an even better person. And I'm proud of her for getting through her first podcast interview because she had a little fear, but she got through it and it's better on the other side. I promise you, Tessa. Thank you very much for listening. To reach me, you can email me, podcast at amaniexperience.com. Follow me on all the socials at Amani Experience. And feel free to donate to our Patreon, which is patreon.com backslash Amani Experience. Thanks again for listening. And to the show we go. I would like to welcome Tessa Young, also known as DJ Tessa, to the Amani Experience podcast. I'm honored you chose me to be on your podcast. <laughs> we are honored to have you. We've been trying to get you on the podcast for a little while, and it's happened. I'm so excited. Over a year. <laughs> yes, over a year, over a year, for sure, for sure. Tell everyone where we are right now. We're at the Michelle Obama Library in North Long Beach, down the street from my house. Yes, the Michelle Obama Library. Beautiful library here in the Gorgeous quiet library. room. I love it. Very yeah. good. Tell the listeners, where did you grow up? I grew up in two places. I was born in Torrance, California, and in 92, I was 12, I moved to Reno, Nevada. Nice. So Reno, Nevada. Mm -hmm. And then how did you, once you graduated from high school, what did you do after that? After I graduated from high school, I went straight into a um, legal secretary job yes. at a law firm and um, worked there for a couple of years and things weren't working out at that law firm. So my, actually my paychecks were bouncing. Oh, <laughs> so that's no. a good reason for me to go. <laughs> yes, yes. And um, I was like, oh, I'm going to do something fun with my life. So I ended up moving to L.A. I had some friends that lived out here. And I tried to do the commercial acting thing for a little bit, and that didn't work out. And after that, I had um, the first job I booked was a McDonald's commercial. Oh, nice. So I got a good little chunk of money from that. And I'm like, I'm taking that back to Reno, and I'm going to open up a clothing boutique. Yes. So I did that. I ended up going back to Reno. So I had a very short stint out here, moved back to Reno, and went back to paralegal work. And then I moved back to L.A. over by the Beverly Center in 2008. 2008. Mm -hmm. So we go back to Reno. Talk to us about maybe some of the most valuable lessons you learned while owning and running Gray Matter. <gasps> when did I tell you about that? How did you know about that? We just know things. <laughs> <laughs> so Gray Matter was a um, art-inspired gift and clothing boutique that um, I think it was... It's probably around like 2002 is grand opening, grand closing. It was <laughs> so very short. It was, um, I take responsibility that it failed, um, but I had a lot of other things going in my, on in my life that um, made that happen and lack of experience with business. So the greatest lesson, there, there's a lot of great lessons that stemmed from that, but um, just being, caring for my business, being really responsible with my business. Um, Marketing was the hardest thing for me, and that's also one of my challenges now that I face is, you know, what is the best strategy for marketing and getting your brand out there? Definitely. There are no failures. There are only lessons. So yeah. you learn some oh valuable God, lessons. I got lots of lessons. But I think that's kind of where you first started kind of playing music inside the studio and kind of doing yeah. all that as well. So you kind yeah. of born DJ Tessa out of yeah. that, correct? Yeah. So 
it was an art inspired boutique. So I had a lot of graffiti type art, um, some fine art. Um, I had little videos like that scratch video, yeah. like Def Jux videos, things like that. And along with the arts music culture, I had a pair of turntables. So nice. I would just collect thrift store records and play them on the turntables. But I had a nice, like, legit DJ set up <laughs> at the store. That's dope. Cool. And then if we continue with our Reno theme, talk to us about what does the warehouse mean to you? <laughs> the warehouse was uh, one of my first jobs as a teenager. It's where I discovered all my music and stole music. <laughs> <laughs> I was a bad kid. But yeah, you remember the little um, cassette tapes? You know, you just take a razor, slide them out, put them in your pocket, and go. <laughs> <laughs> all right, all right, cool, cool. I learned a hard lesson from that. Don't steal. <laughs> yes, don't steal, don't steal. Then you came back to LA. Yes, 2008. 2008, and you were you were working as a paralegal then as well too. Yeah. Right downtown yeah, well, at the Wells Fargo building, right? Yeah. So when I moved here, I took a break for a little bit. I tried, I thought that the commercial acting thing was easy because I got so lucky when I was younger and I went back to that. I must've went on a hundred auditions <laughs> and I didn't get any work. And so I just could not live that lifestyle anymore. During that time, I was also a makeup artist. Cool. So All right. I was able to get a little income from doing makeup. And I got some really cool jobs doing that, but it just wasn't consistent income. So I ended up going back to paralegal work and I was working for a law firm downtown at the Wells Fargo building doing insurance defense work. Good. When was it when you said, you know what, I'm done with paralegal work and it's time for me to spread my wings and go full time with the DJ life? Well, I never hated the paralegal work, which was awesome. And I was able to take all those skills into my personal um, DJ Tessa business and the Prism DJ's business. Um, But I just had a thought one day. I was like, oh, you know what? As like a part-time job, aside from my full-time legal job, I've got this equipment. I have great taste in music. I can just go out and DJ, you know? So it was just a thought that I made happen and... Here I am. Here you are. Yeah. Which is a great segue. So here you are now. How would Mm -hmm. you summarize yourself in 30 seconds or less as of right now, today? Today. Today, let's see. Hmm. (laughs) I hate talking about myself. (laughs) Well, we're going to talk about yourself a little bit in the next 45 minutes. So get ready. A lot of it. (laughs) Um, So summarizing myself now, I think I'm very passionate about my business. I'm very motivated for my business. Um, I have a mission to bring more women into the DJ industry. So that's what Prism DJs is all about, is bringing more women to the forefront of the DJ industry, getting them more jobs. Um, Personally, I'm just a little quirky, awkward, shy, (laughs) (laughs) but a kind, empathetic person. Yes, yes, yes. We love Tessa. Like when I first met you over a year ago at camp, we got to be fast friends because we have a lot in common. Mm -hmm. So, you know, the bond is there. So stay you. We're not, we don't want you to change. (laughs) In your opinion, what's important for creative professionals such as yourself or myself to succeed in today's business environment? I think what a lot of creative professionals want is just to be, air quote, creative. And I understand that. But if you can't afford to have a marketing team or admin team, then you have to do it yourself. So for creative professionals now, they need to learn how to be a business professional. They need to learn how to market. They need to have their website and all their social media unlocked. Definitely. When do you feel, and you can talk about it maybe before you started, when you went full-time, when do you feel was the turning point of your career when you realized this is working, I'm all in, there's no turning back? So after I quit the full-time paralegal job, which was probably around 2010, I did have a lot of free time because I wasn't working consistently. (laughs) So I ended up going to another law firm that was really flexible, and I was able to work part-time. And once I was getting more work where I was feeling too overwhelmed with the part-time job, that's when I said, oh, I can't do this part-time job anymore, that I just need to go full force with DJ Tessa. I hate saying it in third person, but I feel like I have two businesses. I have the business of DJ Tessa and I have the booking agency business for DJs. Yes, definitely. Now, when did DJ Tessa Love become DJ Tessa? 
Oh, gosh. I actually don't even really remember. It was early on, but I think I just wanted a name I never had to change, which <laughs> yes. was my real name. Yes, <laughs> so I'm like, let's just go with DJ Tessa. Go with DJ I Tessa. I didn't even know you knew these things. Girl, you have no idea. <laughs> <laughs> so awesome. <laughs> it is. It is. I wonder for you, back in the day, you had a skill of making mixtapes. When you think oh, about yeah. making your mixtapes, what are some of your favorites that come to mind that you made in the past, if you can oh remember? Oh, my gosh. Well, I just loved hip-hop when I was younger. Um, so, you know, it was just whatever was whatever hip-hop was on the radio. You know, it was just like Snoop and Biggie yeah. and, you know, the Wu-Tang Clan solo yeah, yeah. artist. Okay. It's like, that, yeah. See, another thing in common, like you like the mixtapes. projects. Right, right. Mm-hmm. I would make slow jam mixtapes. So, you know, we call it a baby making music. But, so, you, you know, know, I've been through so many phases of music. So I went through my hip hop phase. I went through my like alternative rock phase, my indie phase, my house music yeah, <laughs> phase. Yeah. But, you know, all of that knowledge together, I feel like is what makes me successful for these DJ jobs that I have to where I can play an eclectic mix. Great. Don't forget about the punk phase either. The, uh, I had, ah, you know, about my punk phase. <laughs> oh my gosh. <laughs> yeah. Great. I loved pop punk. Like no effects was my favorite. <laughs> yeah. Excellent. Why do you love what you do? I think it just boils down to me wanting to make people happy. Like I love making people happy. So for myself when I'm out DJing to see a crowd reacting and dancing and great energy and seeing everyone happy, that brings me a lot of joy. Agree. I'm the same way. And on the flip side, what is something that scares you? Oh gosh. Retirement. <laughs> okay. <laughs> no, okay. just like retirement as an elderly person because I don't have kids, you know, so I don't have that family support. You know, where am I going to be when I'm older? Am I going to be lonely? What if my partner passes away? Well, you have a really strong <laughs> set of friends that kind of yeah. pulls this family too. So I don't think you'll be too alone. Yeah, so we yeah. won't worry too much about that. But I can relate. I understand. I understand. Yeah, or just not having a retirement plan because as independent contractors, you know, we don't have that for, I mean, you can contribute to your retirement plans, but um, I mean, pension plans don't even happen anymore and, you know, I'm not contributing to 401k. So yeah. I have a little IRA. Okay. <laughs> That's good. That. That's good. Just keep doing it's your scary. investments. Yeah. It's scary, <laughs> but you've, you've done well so far. So we're going to take it day by day and keep yeah. building. Yes. With real estate and all that. Now I'm curious to hear your answer on this question. Cause this is something we talk about a lot. Your industry, our industry, the DJ industry is very crowded. How do you rise above all the noise and distinguish yourself from the competition? Sadly, I don't think you can just be a DJ anymore. You have to be a DJ and have um, another... uh, You need to have a story for people, a very real, sincere story. So I think that for me, I have my DJ career, but I'm also passionate about giving women more jobs with prison DJs. So I have myself and I have my passion project. Um, Other examples could be, um, I have another DJ on the roster. That's a DJ. She's also a councilwoman. So that makes her really interesting for clients. Or you have the DJs that are maybe like a DJ or a fine artist. And it shouldn't be like that, that you have to have all these multiple excess things. But I think it's a conversation starter and it makes you interesting. Definitely. Yeah, yeah, and it, it sets you apart from others. As a business owner and like a leader in the DJ industry, you've seen and you've had a lot of DJs that work for you and with you. Are there any favorite stories about maybe DJs you've seen grow as professionals and people that come to mind when you think about your experience leading Prism DJs? Oh, gosh. Let's see. I have a favorite DJ booking okay. and it was uh, Francesca Harding. I had booked her uh, to open for DJ Premier, but Gangstar, amazing. It was just pivotal for me to do that. But to watch her grow in her career, she's now a music director or um, I'm not sure of the actual title, but she puts music in movies. Music supervisor. M- music so, yes. supervisor. Yes. Yeah. So that's an interesting story because you don't have to stay a DJ. You can take that knowledge and yeah. you know move it into another career. So I'm really proud of her for Good. that. All right. She's awesome. Agreed. Continue to evolve. Mm-hmm. 
I know in the past you said that you wish you would have started your DJ career earlier. Yes. Talk to us about why you feel that way. I feel like I would have more experience and especially in my twenties, I had more time for practice <laughs> <laughs> and to starting earlier. Um, yeah, I just felt like in my twenties, I had way more time in my thirties. I just don't have the same amount of time for some reason. And I could have been practicing turntablism all the time. Right. I could have been getting into production. I could have been learning instruments, you know? And, you know, that's still something I can do, but with the business of Prism DJs, a lot of my time is occupied with the admin work. If there was one DJ skill that you'd want to learn right now, what would it be? And then if there's one instrument you want to learn how to play right now, what would that be? One DJ skill that, well, I would just want to get more advanced with my scratching and, um, what was the other question? The Sorry. instrument. What the instrument? instrument? Oh, piano or drums? Yes. I know you said one. Yes, that's okay. I can't I'll, choose. <laughs> that's good. Probably, <laughs> probably drums. Drums? That's Just a good combination. A little, <laughs> bang on it. Yeah. <laughs> Excellent. How has a failure or an apparent failure, such as for later success, do you have a favorite failure of yours? Oh, gosh. I have a lot of failures. I felt like my 20s was a whole decade mm. of failures okay. <laughs> pretty much. So I learned a lot during that time. Um, I learned a lot from the closing of my business and um, what to do and what not to do for my next business. And what I think I just quit too early with my clothing gift boutique that I had. And um, what I learned from that is commitment and persistence. And that's where I am now with my business, you know, with every business and as a business owner, sometimes you feel so lonely, you know, and you just want to quit. But from that experience, I'm like, I can't quit. You know, I just have to keep going, you know, and see where this leads. Why do you feel you quit too early with your first business? I think I had a lot of other life issues happening that were distracting me and I just wasn't responsible. I was so young. And how have you grown your persistence or resilience muscle as we have so that now you're sticking with PRISM? Because PRISM has been around for how many years now? Uh, since 2015. 2015. Yeah, so, so going on five years. Going on five years, mm -hmm. which is great for a business. How have you been able to strengthen that muscle, the persistence muscle and the resilience muscle? Just keep going. Yeah, just mentally tell myself you can't quit. You got to keep going. There's ups, there's downs, and you deal with it and... You know, you, this is your passion. You love this. You just keep going. Yes. Persistence and resilience is underrated. As you've become more successful, both as DJ Tessa and as Prism DJ, so on two sides, you will acquire more critics or haters, as we call them. Mm -hmm. How do you handle your critics? Well, I, that's something I'm still working on. As because, we all are. <laughs> yeah. You know, just honestly... I'm a sensitive person and sometimes I take things to heart. Sometimes I take things personally, even though my advice to someone else, when they would come to me with the critic that they had, I'd be like, Oh, don't worry about them. Who cares? You know, that's not going to affect you in 10 years. So who cares? Um, but you know, I battle it myself and I think a really great book for me was the four agreements, yes. you know, yes. and, um, I forgot exactly what, do you remember all of I them? I don't remember the four. Yeah, we'll yeah, look it up, but yeah, speak, yeah. keep speaking. Yeah, oh, but don't take anything personally right. is one of the agreements. Yeah. I'm curious, like when you, what do you advise younger DJs when you meet them and they are worried about like what people think and how the whole social media world is, what kind of advice do you give them so that they kind of keep their eyes on the prize and stay in their own lane? Oh, gosh. It's such a different world, right? And I'm older, so I don't know what they're going through with. Um, I know what it's like to be a teenager and just being so conflicted and trying to really find yourself. And you're definitely more sensitive at that time. <laughs> and if you have critics at that time, you know, it, it's just affecting you right. so much more. So... I would say just stay focused. Um, if you have a hobby or if you have um, a talent, focus on that talent. You know, try not to get caught up in the social media because I think that's what's affecting a lot of people. 
Um, but that's impossible for them. It is. You know, so I guess stay focused. Stay focused. <laughs> stay focused. That's all I, I could give them. Yeah. Yeah. I, I read you have some good advice in terms of your strategy for handling social media because you have a pretty set amount of time you keep it per day. Like, well, explain that your strategy I, to us. I go on in and out <laughs> <laughs> on that one. But I have the timer yes, on Instagram exactly. for one hour. And so when that comes up, I'm like, get off. <laughs> you don't need this anymore. Yeah, definitely. Great timer. So that's cool. Yeah. Tell us about the darkest time of your life, how you got through that, and what did you learn from that experience? The darkest time in my life, like I always tell you, the darkest time in my life was my 20s. Like oh. I feel like every bad thing happened to me in my 20s. You know, I had um, a relation, a long relationship that um, I was very young, so it felt like a real divorce, you know, when that happened. And then I opened the boutique and then I had to close it very quickly. Shortly after that, I had to file for bankruptcy because I was in debt from the business and I hadn't um, made it an LLC or anything like that. So it was just all my personal debt. But the great thing was, was I was a bankruptcy paralegal before. So I was able to file my own bankruptcy and represent myself at court, which I was really proud of at the time. Um then after that, I rushed into a relationship that wasn't for me. I became an alcoholic. I got a DUI. <laughs> it's just mm -hmm. this progression of events. But I think what really came out of it was that I learned from those things. I learned what to do, what not to do, what's good for me, what's not good for me. But I think most of all, it made me an understanding, empathetic person. So when somebody else is going through those rough times, I know that feeling and I can understand and empathize. Many times when people go through just one of the four or five <laughs> things that you listed, they pretty much shut down. They stop. I shut down. They I did shut down. I had really bad depression how for did, a long time. How did you get through the depression? And then how did you get through the alcoholism? Oh, God. Well, I think... I was just tired of feeling shitty. And so I just made that decision to stop drinking as much. I still love a little cocktail. Right, right. Fair <laughs> <there>. enough. <laughs> but the drinking isn't what it was, you know, and the drinking was causing the depression. So um, eventually time faded out that depression, you know, just trying to stay strong every day. Um, it was so bad to the point where I couldn't even lift myself out of bed. Mm. It's crazy. Yeah. And it's just like, you have to put in your head, I have to get up and go and at least do something today, yeah. you know, and it's just step by step, you know, until you can work your way out of it. Sorry, got a little sensitive. It's okay. Let's <laughs> talk here. We're family. Yeah. What if you met someone today that was say, a little younger and they were in the midst of depression? What tips or advice would you give them? You know, I think having a good hobby and an yes. interest, um, something that you can really delve into uh, is a good distracted mm -hmm. distraction. Yeah. Yeah. What was the hobby that kind of was your distraction? Oh my gosh. I, I, this is so off, but I used, to, I, I was a really crafty kid. Okay. So I used to make jewelry and I used to crochet. Oh, okay. yeah. So yeah. Cool. And so I had done crocheting and jewelry making probably up until I was like 30. And then I ended up doing the DJ thing and just went all in. Yeah. So that's where all my time is focused now. Let's see if we could bring back the crocheting and the jewelry maker. That's, that's I used a to make goal. people hats. I used to make people oh. beanies. I used to make people blankets. All right. I'm yeah. down for an Amani yeah, experience. Yeah, I'll make you a beanie. Hat. A beanie, <laughs> yes. I want a beanie and a hat. Winter is coming. Winter is here, <laughs> definitely. And I'll pay you for it, too. Give me a break, oh, for no. sure. <laughs> Who was the most influential person for you growing up? Oh, gosh. I would just say... My family, my parents, my mom, my dad, my sister. I you ask me for one thing, but I give you several. <laughs> and that's um, that's you lovely. Know, they just they taught me to go for what I wanted, um, to just to be a good person. They also had really great taste in music, so that you Always know, helps. transferred over to me, which is great. <laughs> what do you find easy to do that your friends find hard to do? Administrative work oh, because yes. I worked as a high level administration paralegal for a long time that it just became second nature. And so sometimes when I see people struggling just to answer their emails or um, capitalize a letter after a period, <laughs> their sentences, things like that, or um, communicate well, um, 
I am just very fortunate that I had all of those years that I was able to hone that um, business and communication skill through my paralegal work. And I was able to take that into my business. So um, I had looked over so many contracts, did so many like motions and pleadings and trial preparation that when... I started Prism DJs, I was able to do everybody's contracts and yeah. have good communication with the clients and know how to be very clear and manage expectations and things like that. As you're very, very present in the DJ world, what are some skills that you observe that maybe most DJs need to improve on that you kind of have already going on for you? Like one is for sure contracts and administrative work. That's mm-hmm. definitely one of them. What other skills you feel we as DJs need to work on being better at in general? There's so many elements, right? Um, so I would say the business aspect of it, you know, when you get an inquiry, responding to it timely, um, I know you said contracts already, but yeah, just always mm-hmm. making sure that you have yeah. a contract, um, showing up on time. Mm-hmm. <laughs> it's just the easiest thing to do. Show up early so you don't have to be stressed out and scrambling to connect your equipment. Uh, being courteous when you're on a job um, and being flexible and being a team player because when you get on these jobs, um, sometimes things aren't going as planned. You want to be as helpful as possible. You don't want to stress anybody out. You don't want to be part of a problem. You know, you want to be part of a solution all the time. And obviously your talents, you know, learn, knowing obviously all of the DJs that I have on my team, they know how to DJ, but um, being very knowledgeable in a lot of different styles of music because most of my parties, I would say they're like, oh, you know, we just want some chill house music. <laughs> they get some alcohol in their system. They're like, we want a ratchet party. Yes. And I'm like, I need you to go from like elegant to ratchet, like real quick. Yes. I need you to have that library. So like I was saying, there's so many things that um, are needed to be a successful DJ. Definitely. Yeah. When you have a young female that approaches you and says they want to join your agency, how do you screen them or just determine if they're a good fit or they have the skills to be yeah, a good I member? I Those are things I don't know until I've worked alongside them or they're shadowing me on something. A lot of the DJs that I take in already have a lot of experience or they're recommended from somebody else. So that's how I take DJs in right now. But if it's somebody that's brand new, um, I would have to make sure that um, they have a good music knowledge, that they know their equipment, that they can troubleshoot. And um, a lot of jobs now require the DJ to bring the equipment. I think the dream for a lot of DJs is just to come plug in their computer. <laughs> and and that's done. not the case, you know. It's a, You're going to be surprised, yes. you know, when... The people that are making good money are bringing their single setup, their controller, their wireless microphone, their two speakers on stands. And, you know, they do their job and they do a good job and they get a lot of consistent work. Definitely. What would you like to be better at? I'd like to be better at a lot of things. Give us one. One or two. um, I would like to get better at turntable techniques. Yeah, turntablism. Turntablism. Okay, mm-hmm. good, good. Now, when you were 21, were you here in L.A. or were you back in Reno? I think I was in Reno transitioning to okay. L.A. So we're going to talk to 21-year-old Tessa as mm-hmm. she's transitioning. Give her advice based mm-hmm. on what you know now. What oh, advice yeah. would you give your younger self? Oh, do everything. Do all the things. <laughs> Travel. Get into all of those hobbies. Um for me, like you were saying earlier, I wish I would have started DJing earlier because I had the equipment at the time, um, but it was just for a hobby. Uh, I guess the progression of events went as they were yes. supposed to go. Uh, yes. But um, yeah, just have all of the experiences you can have so you can learn from them. And as you get older, and for me, as I look back on them, I go, you know what? They were crazy times, but I learned so much and I'm happy that I did have those experiences because those good experiences were so good. The bad experiences allow me to help other people that are going through those experiences and give a a good listen or give good advice to them. Indeed. Indeed. What is the one lesson in life that took you the longest to learn? 
saying no and vocalizing my boundaries for sure. Um, I'm a total people pleaser. And so it was yes, 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 all the time. And then I was burning myself out and I was feeling taken advantage of. So because I did so much of that, I learned how to say no kindly and diplomatically. Um, yeah. And then just knowing what my boundaries are and being able to communicate that. How have you been able to improve in saying no? How have I been able to improve like what? Your boundaries. Like how, because, you know, in the beginning you would say yes all the time. Now you say no more frequently. How have you been able to acquire that skill? Oh, experience. <laughs> <laughs> because I could just tell by the way um, somebody comes at me with the description of whatever their project is. And I already see the red flags. So it's easier for me to assess the situation and say no. Good. Yeah. To continue with that, like pricing is a really huge issue in the creative space in general. Yeah. Like, you know, people don't want to pay what we're worth, self-worth yeah. is questions. How have you been able to maintain a strong sense of self-worth and really get what you deserve when it comes to each individual gig or project? I think because I can tell people that I've been doing this for 10 years, I have a wide range of musical knowledge. Um, I think they know when they communicate me with me, that they can trust me. Uh, I forgot what the general yeah. question was. Just I'm sorry. Ma- no, no, no. Just maintaining like the self-worth and being oh, able to say uh, no. Oh, yeah. So basically giving them a reason why I'm worth this much. I usually don't go through all of those things, but the best ones that I can explain to them, I will. Um, but yeah, that I can troubleshoot. I have a backup plan. Because I have a backup plan, I'm not going to... I want your party to be successful, you know, and equipment failures happen, you know? So it's like, I have the extra iPad with the playlist of the song so I can figure that out while I reboot my computer. Or if a speaker goes out, I know I have another high powered speaker. So really just letting the client know that they're good with me and I'm worth it. Yeah. Every great person has a sentence. What is your sentence? For example, my sentence is, I love to help people unlock their creativity by teaching them how to DJ. What is your sentence? Oh, my sentence would be a mission statement. (laughs) Yeah, talk to us, for sure. Uh, My mission through Prism DJs is to bring more women to the forefront of the DJ industry with the goal of um, gender balance in the DJ industry. Done. What is one new habit you've added to your daily routine in the past year or so that has been most beneficial? Oh, daily routine? It can <laughs> Every be. Every other daily routine? It can be whatever you, whatever you like, however um, you do it. <laughs> I have never been much of an exercise person, but um, every other day I do exercise at the gym. Not a thing crazy, but the crunch machine and the arms machine and the um, treadmill and I feel like that has really helped me to, in the morning, figure out, you know, my plan for the day and reduce anxiety, things like that. Yes. Keep yeah. exercising. But, yeah. Um, you say daily. My only daily thing that has ever stuck with me forever was my <laughs> daily coffee every morning. <laughs> That's <laughs> so, fine. But exercise but, is good too. Yeah, so we're good. Exercising every other day, I would say I want to try to do the meditation every yeah. day, but sometimes, you know, I get distracted with something else. Yeah. Yeah. It's hard, but we, we, we're works in progress. So yeah. we'll keep at yeah. it. No worries. <laughs> Now, you mentioned a book earlier. We're really big readers here at the Money Series podcast. If there's Mm -hmm. one, two, or three books you feel people should stop what they're doing right now and start to read them immediately, which ones come to mind? The one that comes to mind, oh, as we go back, is The Four Agreements. Right. I think that's a very important one. Um, And Never Split the Difference. I like that book. Okay, tell us why. Nice. I think it was good for just general communication, like human, human communication, um, obviously (laughs) and, um, business negotiation. Yeah. Business communication negotiation. Yeah. Okay. We'll add those books to the show notes. So thank you for sharing. What has been the best advice you've ever received? Oh gosh. I don't know. That's think. a curveball. Well, thank you. Best know. advice yeah. that I've ever received. Hmm. Uh, 
I, this is going to be a funny one. It's not what I received, but it's from a previous podcast that you had when Z Trip said. <laughs> <laughs> I know what you're going to say. Say it anyways. Go say it anyways. It's good. <laughs> Go to the bathroom when you can, not, not when you, you have, have to. to. Yes, yes. Oh my gosh. <laughs> that that stuck with me. The, yeah, that made an imprint. It's so good. <laughs> me as well. I knew what you were going to say too. Me as well. That's good advice. Yeah. Oh, oh the pain sometimes. <laughs> It's awesome. so true. <laughs> Are you a sports fan at all? No, not at all. I not know nothing all. about sports. Nothing about sports. Okay. We're going to say you're at a major event mm, down at the, uh, we'll say the Staples Center. Mm -hmm. And they're announcing DJ Tessa is coming to the stage. Mm -hmm. What song is playing? Shaka Khan, right? Me. All right, there you go. You want to keep singing or not? No, that was terrible. Please cut that out. We'll Cutting room it. floor. Cutting room floor. Great, great. <laughs> So before I ask you the final question, tell the people how they can find you online, how they can find out more information about Prism DJs. Tell us all the info. Okay. So my personal website is djtessa.com and my Instagram is dj underscore tessa. The Prism DJs website is prismdjs.com and at prismdjs on Instagram. Lovely. So just so everyone knows, you know, this is like your first kind of podcast interview yes. like this. So great job, oh, Tessa. Thank you. I know it took, took you a little it's, while to get here. It's scary. It's, but it's but really you're that such hard? a good person to bring me on <laughs> yes. and make me comfortable. So I appreciate that. I appreciate you a lot. Thank you. I appreciate you too. And now that you've been through it, you know, the other side, it's not as bad as you thought it was, correct? I don't know. <laughs> You're I don't know yet. It. Yes, it's, it's still fine. new. It's still new. We let our guests leave us with any last minute words of wisdom or advice. So I'll say oh. thank you again and allow you to take us home. Oh, words of wisdom. Yes. And advice. You've given a lot already anymore. Yeah. Just um, when you feel like quitting, just keep going. There we go. Thank you. You're welcome. <laughs> thank you for listening to the Amani Experience podcast. You can check out the show notes on amoniaexperience.com forward slash podcast. Please remember to leave us a review on the platform you are listening on and share this podcast with anyone who you feel would benefit from listening. See you soon for our next episode.